everybody, it happened again. I got to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Square Enix was gracious enough to invite me to their final Rebirth preview experience. And in addition to having the time of my life with the producer Yoshinori Kitase and the director Naoki Hamaguchi, I also got to meet most of the voice cast and staff. Afterwards, we were given the exclusive privilege to play through the first four hours of the game. We were not allowed to capture Chapter 1, which did cover the Nibelheim flashback, and the developers' intentions with that were to allow players at home to witness this introduction without any spoilers. I have to say, I do agree with this decision, and I can't wait for you guys to experience it yourselves. Speaking of spoilers, this video will show you some story moments, and if you're still trying to preserve those for your own playthrough, proceed at your own risk, and know that I still appreciate you clicking on the video, but completely understand if you have to go. But I wouldn't be mad if you click that like and subscribe button and turn notifications on. That being said, let's get right into it. For this preview, I elected to play in the new Dynamic Difficulty, as I do enjoy a challenge, and that does seem to be the most challenging option out of the gate. Chapter 2 starts in Calm, and after telling the party the story of Nibelheim, Cloud gets a moment of freedom to explore this sprawling town. Lacking its own Mako reactor, Calm relies on Midgar's pipeline of energy. This allows Calm to both enjoy the luxury of technology without facing environmental consequences of consuming livestream in the area. The result is a lively country town full of culture and activity. From the small impression the preview covered, even Calm seemed larger and more full of possibility than the entire accessible slums portion of Remake. Immediately upon leaving our room at the inn, the innkeeper, Broden, a character new to Rebirth, has left us our first deck of Queen's Blood, the much-touted card minigame. What's this? A gift from our humble establishment. Though it may not look like much, it should help you to break the ice with those you meet. Queen's blood? The limited time didn't allow me to comprehensively explore the ins and outs of the game. The mechanics seem fairly intuitive. Each card has a select number of pawns and may be placed on any tile with a matching amount. Each card also has a shape on it that represents how its placement will affect the pawn structure on the board, called rank. Furthermore, each card has a power stat, which is added to the lanes its placement affects, and the overall goal of the game is to have the highest total power at the end. It is clear that there are additional elements to gameplay, such as abilities, will no doubt increase the sophistication of play. After the Queen's Blood tutorial, you are given a few brief instructions as to possible things to do in comp. Zero, one, and two. Good After morning, sir. I must apologize for not introducing myself to you earlier. I'm Broden, the owner of this inn. Your companions have all stepped out. Oh, but Barrett left a message he wanted me to pass along to you. You missed roll call, soldier boy. Luckily, you're on leave for the day. Don't waste it, though. Get your equipment checked ASAP. Sound advice? Perhaps a trip to the arms dealer is in order? Good idea. By the way, Cloud, do you have any folios on you? Yeah. In that case, you might also want to pay a visit to Magnata Books. They have stores all over, but the first official one was built here in Calm, and their resident scholars are remarkably talented. If you want to unlock the true potential of your folios, you should go see them. The first customization is always free. Cloud is greeted by Red 13 outside the inn, and he officially joins the party in a ceremonious way. Finally. Rough day yesterday, huh? You've been waiting for me? I've been waiting for a chance to thank you properly. Without your help, I'd still be in Hojo's clutches, trapped in that lab was nothing. Even so, I owe you a debt, until it's paid. I'm going to accompany you. Oh, uh, if you're getting your equipment checked, have them check mine while you're at it. Sure thing. Hmm. 
Jack's got a backbone. The game uses this opportunity to introduce the party level mechanic. Party level is independent of character level and is raised by a variety of tasks. The higher your party level though, the more abilities you have access to in your folios. From here, Cloud is free to explore a comp. You have the option to play some Queen's Blood with town folks, visit the weapon store, or visit Magnata Books. I personally elected the bookstore first, and upon approaching the bookstore you're greeted by Aerith, and this interaction gives the player an explanation of the affinity system and dialogue choices affect Cloud's relationship with each character. Magnata Books allows us to learn about folios, which resemble the sphere grid of Final Fantasy X. Party level and SP unlocked from side quests are used at bookstores and book vending machines throughout the world of Rebirth to unlock new synergy abilities and stat increases. Speaking to the weapons vendor shows us the familiar weapon skill system. It's largely similar to remakes, though seemingly heavily expanded. We also get a look at our first new weapon for Cloud, the Sleek Saber, which is referred to as a Republic Era weapon, and more on Republic of Junon later. The weapon this time was a little too pricey for me, but luckily it was available in a chest not too much later. You have the opportunity to talk to Tifa here, and you may notice some tension, and although the tension has an explanation, I can't spoil the context for you. But this dialogue does show just how many optional character building moments this game gives us so that we can truly experience the depth of this world. Meanwhile, Cloud and Barrett's bromance seems to be blossoming. Look who it is. You up already? Drinking already? Uh, no, sir. Not gonna have a drop till Seventh Heaven's back up and running. First one's on me, okay? Now that's what I'm talking about. Gotta remember to order some top shelf stuff in that case. Before long, we're ushered to the clock tower where we have our meeting with Aerith. Cloud! Over here! Let's get started then, shall we? I think Midgar's this away. Should be, yeah. Funny, isn't it? How small it looks? It is far away. So, did something happen between you and Tifa? Hmm? Don't look so shocked. We're roommates, you know. she say something? Not about you two, no. Still, I can tell. I would have given anything to have a friend when I was growing up. Don't take her for granted. Gotta be. 
During our attempted escape from Shinra forces in Calm, we are greeted by Broden, who reveals himself as an ally as he creates a diversion to allow you to escape Calm through a secret tunnel at the end. Broden explains his reasoning for helping and then gives you the item transmuter. I covered item transmutation in my previous preview video, but what is interesting is that we get yet another reference to the old Republic of Junon. It's a transmuter converts raw materials into more practical items. A Republic antique, but it still works. Why are you doing this? You could have just turned us in. Yeah, I could have. But this town and I have a history with Shinra. Who knows? Maybe this will turn out to be the worst decision I've ever made. So before I change my mind, you better get going. Oh, you made it. All in one piece? Sorry we're late! For the love of... Where the hell have you two been? On a date. Kind of. What? Uh... Well, that was the last one. At least till things calm down. Got that? Uh, uh. Now, let's move! The existence of the air raid tunnel itself is a fascinating bit of lore that connects directly to Before Crisis, and Rebirth confirms that the bombing of Calm, resulting in its partial destruction, is indeed canonical. Exiting the tunnels, we are finally given free reign over the vast grasslands area. Now we were only given a limited time to play the segment, so I did my best to prioritize the most vital and curious portion of this section. Truth be told, there's likely 10 plus hours of content immediately available, and in an effort to avoid redundancy I will not include footage that was included in the previous Grasslands breakdown from TGS. The feeling of freedom on the open Grasslands was amazing, the combat experience was just as fantastic as I expected and remembered. The added anxiety of dynamic mode also created the right level of challenge for my first playthrough. The story eventually ushers you to Oliver, who suggests you cross the marsh. And along the way, you run into Chocobo Bill. Well, well. If it ain't my favorite group of hitchhikers. Oh, fancy meeting you here. Thanks again for the ride to Calm. Ah, uh, don't mention it. It's the least I could do for two such lovely young ladies. But I do believe I neglected to introduce myself. The name's Bill. And you can count on me for a lift anytime. Except today, that is. Afraid the old buttes pulled up lame. Sorry about that. No biggie. We're enjoying the fresh air. Thanks, though. You, uh, know someplace we can hunker down? Hmm. Hunker down, you say? Oh. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten what it was like to be young and in love. You'll just head straight that away toward the swamplands. You'll find an abandoned building by the dock. I guarantee no one will bother you there. The entrance to the marsh sets up a similar dilemma as the OG, requiring you to procure chocobos in order to pass. This also takes a moment to hard confirm something that my fellow lore lord and Norse mythology enthusiast MJ Gallagher has dreamed of his entire life. The canonical correction of the name Zolom to the more accurate Midgard Sormer. Keep going till we hit Juna. Sure. Why not? You trust these rotting hulks? I mean, we could. Let's not. Then maybe we swim it. This swamp is home to the deadly Midgard Swarmer. Beware. But even if you're slow, you can rent a chocobo. We'll see you safely past being nothing if not fast. So just give Bill the word and he'll pick you out. A bird! 
<laughs> well, can we rent some birds? Can we? Fine. <laughs> At the nearby Chocobo Ranch, we are introduced to Billy and Chloe and are given a little more backstory about their tragic past and its connection to a unsurprising new character from Remake. After capturing Pico for Billy and doing a little test race, we finally meet Chadley. Chadley gives Cloud the Chad unit and then explains the variety of activities that are unlocked on the world map when the Old Republic's Remna Wave towers are activated. Chadley then gives a brief explanation of each type of side activity. Summon Crystals. Unlocking these makes each region summon, in this case Titan, easier to defeat in the Chadley Combat Simulator. The combat simulator makes a return, this time portable and built by Chadley. In addition to being able to battle Titan, you can also do a variety of training quests. During my playthrough, I attempted to fight Titan, but without any preparation or summon crystals, this proved implausible. Life Springs. Life Springs are knowledge fonts. When you approach them, you will hear the hoots of a spring seeker owl. The music as you approach these fonts is memorable and was one of the highlights of the experience for me. After a short mini game, unlocking these life springs will reward the player with knowledge about the region. Special side note about this owl. It could be a mere coincidence. In Roman mythology, the owl is often associated with Minerva, whose appearance in Crisis Core has always been steeped in mystery. Perhaps the side activity that I was most excited to try was the Proto Relic quests. Given the mysterious description of these ancient artifacts, I was curious how they might impact the lore. Each region has a Proto Relic questline. In the Grasslands region, the Proto Relics questline has the party following Beck's badasses in pursuit of the Proto Relic. Upon completion of the four quests associated with this line, we are given a relic that should look very familiar to longtime fans of the series. Completing the quest triggers a cutscene that gives us a glimpse of this familiar warrior. take a moment again to give a spoiler warning. This next part in particular blew my mind, and I don't want to rob any of you of that if that's how you want to experience the game firsthand. Let's go. Back 
disguised itself as an island. Gee, I had no focus. I was surprised to fight the creature formerly known as Zolom this early without grinding. I immediately regretted selecting Dynamic as this fight is hard, though through sheer luck, I entered combat with Tifa and Aerith, who were both natively equipped to do ice damage. At this point in the preview, I had officially run out of time, and this was going to be my only chance to beat him. Through some miracle, and the materia Shiva, I was successful, and I was not ready for what came next. Remember who I am? Aerith. Oh, it's good to have you back, Cloud. Sephiroth? I knew he was strong, but still. Those guys are looking for him, too. They've got to be. Yeah, I kind of get that feeling as well. Let's not lose her. Once again, I truly cannot express enough gratitude to Square Enix for this opportunity. I know some of you may be wondering who I am and why I was invited to this event. Please consider subscribing and you just might find out. As a lifelong fan of Final Fantasy VII, getting to meet the developers and cast was a sublime experience for me. Mr. Hamaguchi in particular is an absolute love with his game, and he has every right to feel that way. It exceeded every expectation I had. He was extremely supportive and personally watched much of my playthrough. We even shared a few earnest moments of appreciation for each other, developer to fan. My friends, I sincerely thank you for watching my Rebirth preview experience. I can't express how excited Excited I am to go on this unknown journey with you all. He's here, isn't he? I don't know. Well, monsters sure are. No doubt. Monsters we can handle. We've dealt with worse. That's easy for you to say. You fought the worst for a living. Not us, though. Yeah. Good boy. You mind taking the lead, Merc? 
for 2000. <laughs> Enough for her standard course twice, right? Her what now? Ask him. Cloud? Uh, uh, forget it. You guys need to focus. 